Hey folks, we're back for part two of uh, Keldoran's video tutorial and sort of introduction get started to Space Station 13. This is on the Goon Station version, just to let you guys know. So, last time we went over the primary equipment areas along with the way to use them as far as changing your hand is with this right here and how to drop whatever is in that active hand. This episode we're going to go over some of the uh, extra equipment slots and go over the intent and status section over here. So let's get started. Um, the first one is going to be your foot slot, which shoes don't really ever make a difference other than thick. There might be an issue where clown shoes do something different, but otherwise their shoes wear them, I guess. It's nice. They're, they're very, very, very low key and you shouldn't even have to worry about them. Uh, next to that is gloves. Gloves serve two very important purposes. Purpose number one is you don't get your fingerprints on things. So if you are doing some sort of heinous crime and you don't want the detective to come by and use his uh, fingerprint scanner, then wear gloves with whatever you do. If you're the detective, you want to wear gloves as well so you don't get your grubby fingerprints all over the evidence. The other reason you would want to use gloves is insulated gloves, like the yellow ones I am uh, wearing right now, protect me from electrical shock uh, if I'm using my hands on something. So for example, if I was to grab an electrified door or something, it wouldn't electrocute me immediately. Next to that is the headset. We're going to go over that more with chatting, but you're going to want to keep it on pretty much constantly unless you have like a station bounce radio. You're going to always want that headset on. Next to it is the glasses, or just eyewear. Eyewear is pretty self-explanatory. The only time it's really useful is if you get your eyes permanently damaged, you can wear prescription glasses. I haven't really experienced anything about that yet. And also, uh, sunglasses protect you uh, to a certain extent from flashes and such. Now onto my two favorite slots, the pocket slots. What's nice about them is you can put uh, most sort of useful tool-like items, whether it's uh, my PDA is in my pocket right now because I'm leaving my belt open for a utility belt I put there now, which can also hold uh, tools and such as you'll see. I can open up my tool here, pull the crowbar, and put it in my utility belt. So it's just an extra container, and I am all of containers in this game. And uh, anyways, pockets are really useful because they allow you to use the items even if they're in your pocket. So for example, this scanner when you turn it on will actually detect uh, pipes and cords that are underneath flooring because there's actually a huge um, electrical and pipe system that goes throughout the entire ship and you can just see as I walk around um, it blinking. Now if I want to use that hand to for example pull up the flooring but I still want to see what's going on I put that tray scanner that's still turned on in my pocket now I've got a free hand plus I'm using it. So pocket super useful use them often. Um, I'm going to turn that off just because we don't really need to be staring at blinking stuff the whole time. Now, uh, that's it for the extra slots right here. This one particularly can be closed by clicking this button, but really no reason to unless you absolutely want to see those extra four tiles. So we'll move on. Throwing is what you'd expect if you want to move something multiple areas or there are certain items that can't be placed on a table like a wrench. You're going to want to throw it to wherever you want it to go, so I'll throw this toolbox three cells over this way and uh, bam look at that I threw the toolbox there are, I very rarely use throwing and I imagine you will all very rarely unless of course you're using a grenade or something like that um, otherwise experiment if you want but throwing is you're gonna use it when you use it down here I forget hold on a sec I think I know what this is all for pull pull click that okay yeah this is your stop pulling button you can pull things in this game by right click uh, and moving. So if I want to keep this fuel uh, tank around, I can pull it. Now this fuel tank is following me, and the two ways to get it to go away is to walk into it, which pushes it. But if you don't want to push it, what you would do is you'd pull it to where you want it to go, like in front of this doorway, and press this button right here, and stop pulling it. So that's your stop pulling button. It's super useful. We're going to put that back. Um, and to the right of that is the intent button, which is also incredibly useful. Depending on what this is set for is going to depend on what you do. So if you have help selected and you click on someone with your open hand, you're going to shake them to try to wake them up or perform CPR. If you have the disarm button, you're going to try to take whatever uh, item is out of their hand, uh, their active hand at the time. So if somebody comes at you with like a stun baton, you can try to use disarm and uh, take that stun baton for yourself. Now, if you go over here to harm, you're going to sock him in the face. That's pretty 
plain and simple. If you uh, change it one more time to grab, grab, the first level of grab I believe is just pretty much touching them, which is really only useful if you're using like shock gloves or something like that. At least in my experience. I could once again be very wrong. I am still relatively new at this game. I just realized that there's no real introductory uh, to this game. So please feel free to critique and or critique rather and tell me to change things. Um, but for now that's that. Grab is also an upgrading thing. The more you click on a uh, another player or living thing with grab, the more it's going to do. So the first uh, click on a player with grab is going to touch them or put your hand on them. The second is going to be like aggressively holding them in your hands. Um, and the third I believe is strangle or something like that. So you want to at least aggressively hold something in your hands to really move it around. So for example, if I wanted to take someone and throw them in a locker, I'd open the locker, click on them once with a grab, click on them again to actually grab them, move them to a locker, and either throw them in there or click them to set them in there. And then I would shut the locker, um, rather switch to a hand that can shut a locker, shut the locker and will that sucker shut. You should never do this, this is a horrible idea. Um, but that gives you an idea of what you can do with the uh, grab intent. But generally you want to keep it on help because nothing like going to the captain and trying to like accidentally do something and you end up punching him in the face and oh, then you're kind of shit out of luck. To the right of that is the run walk toggle. Running is what you're going to want to be doing most of the time. You can move pretty fast. It uh, allows you to run away from things and get from place to place really quickly. The only danger is there are certain things that will uh, make you slip if you're running, particularly if a janitor is mopping somewhere. If a janitor is mopped an area, and you run through it, you will very likely fall down. Falling down makes you drop everything in your hands, which is a big pain in the ass, and you just stay there stunned for a couple of seconds. Um, so unless you know there's something that will make you slip, you should be running. To the right of that is the resist um, button, and I think that changes depending on situationals. Uh, otherwise, really don't worry about it unless you can see a reason to. Above that is the uh, lie down, stand up button. Once again, a button you probably won't be using unless you want to stand up. Like if something hits you and you end up like lying down, click it again and stand up. Or if you want to lie down on a bed, go ahead and do that too. Um, otherwise, not something you really have to worry about. The awake sleep button you're also going to be using probably only if you're asleep. Um, but otherwise it toggles you being on the ground and not being able to see anything, which is even worse than being on the ground. So that's it for the sort of toggle intent buttons. Up here is a lot more important. Um, here we have your general health. Um, keep an eye on it, especially the color. If it starts to turn orange, go find some help. Go get healed or something. Um, don't run around orange. That's just asking for someone to walk up and like trip and punch you in the face and you'd be dead. If it's red, you probably aren't even moving. But if you are moving and it's red, like immediately, no shit, like call on your intercom, get someone to come heal you because you're going to be dead soon. Um, however, once you get to a certain point, you just start gasping for air and you lose consciousness and there's not much you can do at that point. Uh, above it is the temperature meter. Also, keep an eye on it at all times. If it starts to get like really frost chilly, get the hell out of there unless you have something to keep yourself warm. Likewise, if it starts to get incredibly hot, get the hell out of there unless you have something to uh, you know keep yourself from breathing hot air. These two things, I believe, are if you're on fire or poisoned, like I think that's toxin or something. I'm not 100% sure, but that's basically what those two things are. Those are bad statuses. Once again, get the hell out of where you're at, go get yourself healed, talk to a doctor um, about aperitiva, possible, uh, possible causes of death. Anyways, uh, above that is your oxygen. If that's ever not happy, get the hell out or put on internals. Um, because that means, like, if it's happy and it says O2, that means you're breathing air and you're a healthy, good human being and everything's cool. If it doesn't, you're dying, most likely. Above that is your internals. We're going to talk about internals really fast after I check the time. Oh, we're just about out of time. So we're going to do this real quick. Internals, that's you breathing air um, without actually having air around you. So like having a gas mask on. Speaking of which, everyone starts the game with one of these cute little boxes in their backpack. Click on the backpack, click on the box, it'll put it in your active hand. Make sure you have the other hand empty. Click on the box, click on this gas breather, or um, breather mask. Go ahead and put that on your face. Click on this tank. You're good. Uh, click on the tank again. You're going to open it. That allows you to breathe air, so now there's internals up here, and this internals thing should say on soon. There we go. And I would set it to 150, but that's just because I read that on the wiki, and I'm superstitious about that. That's it for internals. Um, the air tank and this mask aren't the only things. For example, gas masks and jetpacks, or this thing in a jetpack, or the bigger oxygen tanks. And usually these tanks can be placed on anything. Like, the one you start with can be put in your belt slot. 
that way you can keep a free hand because if you put that tank anywhere else like in a backpack or a container or drop it you lose oxygen um, so your internals immediately shut off lastly is the aiming um, depending on where you click up here is where you're going to interact with somebody so if I try to shoot someone with a gun or hit them with my toolbox and I have it set to their right hand I'm gonna hit them in the right hand generally you want to hit it in the chest um, this also however affects healing it's just wherever you aim anything so if you see somebody's chest is really bloody don't try to heal their left leg it's not gonna do them any good so uh, next time on uh, the space station 13 tutorial we're gonna go ahead and talk about uh, how to interact with a few things in the world to get you on the Hey.